The Heart Poland Kazik and the Commander's Car project is a series of four workshops for schools incorporating storytelling, film, history, music and creative responses through artwork and discussion. The workshops explore and build upon the true story of Kazik Piechowski, a Polish Boy Scout who escaped from the German Nazi concentration camp Auschwitz in 1942. 70 years after his escape, the short documentary Kajik and the Commander's Car was made by Hannah Lovell and Katie Carr. The film documents Katie's first meeting with Kajik, where she travels to his hometown of Gdansk in Poland to meet him, hear his story in his own words, and to present him with her tribute song Commander's Car, written about the last few seconds of Kajik's escape from Kajik's point of view. In the documentary, Kajik talks about what happened when the Nazis first invaded Poland. Lekarzy, nauczycieli, księży, księży i harcerzy. harcerzy. Dlaczego harcerzy? Młodzi ludzie. Dlatego, że harcerze to byli patrioci. W sercu Polska była. Kazik also describes how he was captured and transported to Auschwitz, his experience in Auschwitz, and how he planned and managed to escape along with three other political prisoners, all disguised in SS uniforms and in the camp commandant's car. And then finally, through listening to Katie's song, he gives us an insight into how it felt during the last few minutes of his escape as he remembers it. Ja muszę powiedzieć, że ja słuchając to, jestem tam. Nie tu. Tam w Oświęcimiu. I ja wiem, że oni na mnie liczą. Jak ja teraz nie zagram tego SS-mana, ja muszę dobrze zagrać, żeby oni uwierzyli, że ja jestem oficer SS. Jak ja tego dobrze nie zrobię, nie uda się. Katastrofa. Katastrofa. The documentary also features animated sections reconstructing the escape with drawings by Galen Wainwright. The documentary is screened to the students in the fourth and final workshop, but before that, three workshops take place. The first two workshops are led by Vanessa and involve storytelling, role-playing and written work. Vanessa explores the concepts of war and freedom with the young people, much of the background of Polish history, as well as a detailed account of Kazik's capture and subsequent escape from Auschwitz. They choose the 20th of June 1942 as the day for their escape. The three of them have got to make their way up onto the first floor all the time praying nobody's going to find them in there, inside. SS uniforms. Pristine. Gleaming. Quickly, they strip off their camp racks and they put them on. They feel different. So Gen X is going to be the driver. Kajik speaks German. He's got the peaked cap. He is going to be Rudolf Hess, the camp commander. But they're missing one very important thing. They don't have any papers, documents, passes, nothing. And so the plan, not perhaps the best plan in the world, but it's the only one they've got, is they're going to drive fast. They're going to trust that the guards are going to be frightened enough to open the gate without asking to see anything. And there's 50 metres to go and the barrier is still down and Joseph, the priest, bangs Kashik on the back and he goes, Kashik, do something. He stood up and had that confidence to 
boost himself up that quickly and think, right, I'm going to do this. I want my freedom. Yeah. I'm going to fight for it. He thought uh, it was impossible to have freedom, but like he's just showed us that that's just thinking that if you do something about your if you do something about your thoughts, then it shows that the impossible can be made possible. I think what the story shows is that you should never give up on what you believe in. Stuff like he never gave up in like fighting for Poland and stuff, even when the Russians also came and all of that stuff. There's still stuff like wars and stuff going on because uh, there's fighting in Syria still. Uh, I think there was, some, there was something on the news this morning about it. Everybody should not know about. Kejik's past because he's been through some horrors like everybody <coughs> should know like because I don't want him to think that it's just a memory just something we live. this is this is like he held to him and we want to be supportive I think he teaches us to like um, value life and to appreciate what we have because we didn't have to go through what he went through and um, I just want to thank him because like he's a big inspiration because nowadays we look up to people who are like in the music industry but haven't really done anything for us but he went through a lot and yeah, I just want to thank him. The themes of Kajik's story are then explored further in the third workshop with Galen Wainwright, Responses Through Artwork. It helps if you think about a dramatic part of the story, maybe just as they're coming up to the border post. Maybe just as they're escaping. Ooh, that's a great picture. They look all dirty and sad. Yeah, excellent. My favourite week was the third week when we were doing the drawing because sometimes when people speak, they can't really express themselves a lot. But I think things like drawing, it, you can express yourself more because it's like, um, puts you in a comfortable position where you can just think of something and just put it down on the paper in a picture form instead of saying it because then you've got more chances of the person getting your emotions than just saying it. I think it was good that you guys were like getting people involved as well, making them actually think about what this meant to him or that meant to him. And I noticed that he was filming all of the drawing and stuff as well. He would probably see that and make an impact on him as well, so it kind of felt like we was making a difference. Then in the fourth and final workshop, the filmmakers Katie Carr and Hannah Lovell introduced the documentary, which is then screened, followed by a singing workshop with Katie Carr and discussion to camera. I thought that um, the film was very insp inspirational to everyone who watched it. Also, I think the people who created it, like Hannah and Katie, and um, were very good, and they created the film, and it meant something to everyone who watched it, and it kind of was saying something, that you could be free if you try. And also, Katie's song was fabulous. It was amazing. I really want to watch it every day. And I think that the countdown in the song shows the tension in whether his life or death, like whether he's going to have to kill himself or whether he'll be a free man. So I think it's good how you represented it in the song, that the last moments, which could have been his last moments of his life or, or his first moments of freedom. It was just powerful and emotive, and the way you sang it made it even stronger. I'd just like to say that your story is very moving and very inspirational and I think it's inspired me to do a lot of my own things and believe that you could do stuff now on your own. For me it's a really important thing. Um, I keep talking about it at home and I keep doing research about it. It's good to, um, to um, know about like, what people have gone through um, through the World War Two and um, and what, what was happening in Germany at that time and what was happening to um, innocent people. You would think that he would want to hide all of this away, like so that no one would, uh, like so that the memories wouldn't come back to him. But he actually wants to share it with everyone, and I think that's a like a good thing that he's doing. <laughs> to the song helps us connect to it as well because if it had that effect on him then it's, it made it more real and it had that effect on us as well. When he heard about the song and that there was crying like some tears came to my eyes and 
when he was talking about it, it I just got a cold motion in my heart. He's such a strong character and to go through the Holocaust and then to come out of that and even to go through 10 years of imprisonment through the uh, Soviet Union through that and still, still be the character that he is today is just such an inspiration to not just young people, old people, everyone and just we look up to him. Through the use of Kajik's extremely valuable first-hand account as a Holocaust survivor, captured in the documentary, and the use of cross-curricular workshops, the Heart Poland project aims to expand students' understanding of World War II and the Holocaust, as well as to provoke creative responses to history from the students. The project also aims to promote integration of different cultures, and in particular, to promote understanding, dialogue and harmony between British and Polish communities in Britain. I actually think Polish people they stand up for their rights and you should give people respect for standing up for their rights and not backing down. I think from today's lesson, I think we, most of us learned that there is one thing we should never do. Judge anybody or hurt anybody because of their religion or where they're from because if you think about whether you're from this country or another country on the other side of the world everybody is equal. I think the video was good for our learning and I think um, we should be so grateful that you guys came. I would just like to say that it was a great experience um, learning about all of this and um, I hope other people can experience it.